This is Metal Mike, and in this episode of the 80s Glam Metal Cast, I'm joined again by former Wasp drummer Mike Dupke, and together we lay out the characters and moves for a heavy metal fighting game, Metal Combat. We take 12 iconic rockers, guys like Ozzy, Alice Cooper, Dio, and more, and try to imagine them in a Mortal Kombat Street Fighter type of game. This is a lot of fun. We laugh a lot because we're hearing each other's ideas for the first time, just like you are. Game on, people! Fight! Well, Mike, welcome back to the 80s Glam Metal Cast. How you doing, brother? What is up, Mike? How you doing? Thanks for having me back, man. Good to be here. Hey, man. I really appreciate you being on. So uh, just to give the listeners a little insight of of this special episode, uh, for, for years I've been kicking around this idea of what if there was a heavy metal fighting game in the likes of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. So, uh, you know, I don't know if this would have been something that would have came out back in the late 80s, early 90s that would have made sense for that. Or maybe it's a nostalgia thing that could come out today, but I don't really have any kind of uh, game creation skills, so I was never really able to flesh it out. <laughs> and actually, I never really did flesh it out and uh, until we had some conversations, you and I, through email. And uh, like I said, once again, appreciate you, you playing along with this one. But we started uh you know picking a roster picking up some characters what their powers would be i'm thinking uh we can jump right into it i completely agree I, it's funny like when you presented this in the email at first i thought well you know that, that sounds interesting and then like you sent me the like your list of possible characters and i thought oh, okay yeah let's we'll see and then like a little bit later i'm like hmm i wonder what what rob halford would have and ooh, oh wait he could do this and then, oh wait, this guy could do this too, <laughs> and like it, it, it kind of it turned into like a whole big thing. And <laughs> I started like asking my wife about it, like, oh, what what kind of weapons would Alice Cooper have? She's like, I don't know. And I <laughs> started like swirling around in my head, and I started really, in, really enjoying the idea. So awesome! It man. was it was fun to come up with uh, with as, as much of this stuff as I you know as, as as I possibly could, or just you know have ideas and i'm sure we'll have ideas for each other's characters as well oh yeah i'm sure so uh basically i'm assuming what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, we'll announce what, what guy we have uh we can tell about some of his uh special moves that he can do and then uh at least i know with mine each character i came up with almost like a what it is in mortal kombat is like a fatality or like a super move that that uh that comes once your your, your power bar fills up so uh we can just go through each guy and explain their special moves. Uh, does that sound like a plan, Mike? That sounds great. So why don't you go first, man? Go first. Okay. Well, I had, I, I guess I, I had a, a, a similar kind of like uh, frame about this whole thing in that I think most of the characters, most of the characters are like some of those fighting games. Like, yeah, you would, you would have uh, certain powers, certain weapons, and I came up with the idea of, like, that each character would be able to conjure someone or something, uh, because obviously a bunch of the guys that we have listed have, you know, partners or, or characters. For instance, yep. uh, you know, like Bruce Dickinson would be able to conjure Eddie. Yes. You know, yep. as, like, as like a special move or something like that, in addition to, to weapons and towers. So... To start with, uh, I like my first guy was Lemmy, uh, and I thought uh, a weapon. And you're just based on the stuff they have. The weapon would be uh, the Iron Fist, okay. where he would have, you know, where his, his I'm assuming his right hand could probably, you know, come and dominate, grow eighteen, you know, eighteen times in size with uh, just like you know the Motorhead cover and relinquish a crashing blow. Uh, to the opponent. Yes. That would be the first one. The, uh, uh, another weapon would, of course, be the, the Ace of Spades! The Ace, Ace of Spades! Ace of Spades, where, kind of stealing from uh, Gambit from the X-Men here, where he could have, you know, uh, uh, super-powered uh, giant playing cards that could slice through the opponent. Good and one. Good one. Uh, I start... That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Some other thing, uh, I tried to work in somehow... Uh, like a, a special special weapon would be the the Rick and Bastard uh, guitar, but uh, I definitely would have to have like the, as far as something he would conjure would be Snaggletooth. Obviously, the the Motorhead mascot mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. could come and uh, devour the opponent uh, with its giant tusks. 
Awesome, man. I like those. Those are ideas for Lemmy, anyway. Yeah, I like th- <laughs> those. Are great, especially Ace of Spades. Yeah, that's that was perfect, man. Well, so uh, I'll start off yeah. with uh, Dave Mustaine. So at first, I'm thinking, man, Dave Mustaine doesn't necessarily scream, you know, superpowers like somebody like Gene Simmons or, or somebody like that. But I'm like, you know, maybe we got something here. So I kind of took. Like you, I use song titles uh, as reference. So I figured one of Dave's moves could be a hook in the mouth. That's one of their songs. And I, I, I'm envisioning, you know, kind of like Mortal Kombat. If people know that with Scorpion, he, he throws the chain. Get over here. And he hooks you. So hook in the mouth, he'll get you right in the mouth like he's catching a fish on a chain. Uh, so hook in the mouth is one. <laughs> then another one I figured he could conjure up the Tornado of Souls. Uh, tornado going across the screen and, you know, blows you away oh, or knocks course. you over. And then... I gotta have him transform uh, into Vic to, uh, to to kill you off for the final move. And all I could imagine for I mean, Vic has, has done a lot of different things uh, on their album covers and T-shirts. But I'm picturing Vic when he's got the transforming into Vic into the military suit, and he just presses the button, and a nuke falls on you and just blows you to smithereens. No, <laughs> no, 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 no! I love it. <laughs> All right, man. Who's next? Yeah, honestly, with a couple of the ones that you had, I was, I was honestly like, I picked the guys that I had because I was kind of coming up short on, on the other ones that ended up being on your team. But that was, <laughs> that's killer. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, my my next guy. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Okay, so next uh, on my pick was Gene Simmons. <laughs> The legend, and that obviously, like I, he might have been the easiest because uh, the certain weapon and power. Like all you got to do is look at the comic books to look what he was able to do in the original late seventies comic books. His his demon boots uh, could fly off and and attack the opponent. I guess like a like a pair of dogs or something like that. So you could definitely have uh, demon boot power. Another weapon would obviously be be the axe base. Yep. That could uh, slice through the opponent, and of course the breathing fire, uh, which is you know a very Mortal Kombat type of ability, and that was pretty straight up. And then uh, as far as like just because I went with like conjuring someone like who would be like a one-time special superpower, he could obviously conjure Paul Stanley. <laughs> To do some kind of power, although my pick would be to shoot lasers out of his eyes, just like Kiss Me the Fan of the Park. Sweet. With that, you know, late 70s, <laughs> type of like, you know, cheesy, cheesy sound effect to go with it. That's awesome, man. Definitely. Yeah. It, and I, I forgot about that with the boots in the comics. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, Nikki Six. Right, Nikki Six for Motley Crue. This was a tough one at first. I'm thinking like, okay, what am I going to do with Nikki Six? So I thought first he could have uh, like electrical wires wrapped around one of his arms and then in his hand would be the live wire. And just kind of go up to you and shock you. Oh, and then, and then I thought, I, then I thought to more recent tours where he has the base that shoots the flames. I figure that could be called Red Hot, and you know, he flips the base around and, and, and you know shoots you with fire out of his base. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I figured we got to go transform or conjure up a uh, uh, mascot, right? Uh, Alistair Fiend, and basically he'll transform yeah. or, or he'll conjure Alistair Fiend. I fig- picture Alistair Fiend on a motorcycle with a ray gun and a, a sickle, and just comes at you and just you know starts whacking you with some weapons. So <laughs> I like the live wire. That's uh, that's awesome. That, yeah, that that that's uh, that's kind of it's funny. Like that's exactly what I was thinking for for Nikki as well. Very good. Thank you, sir. Let's see. Uh, my next one, James Hetfield, also kind of struggled a little yep. bit with this one. A uh, buddy of mine actually had uh, had a really good su- uh, suggestion. Uh, one of his moves uh, could obviously be uh, whiplash. Oh yeah, and I, you know, it's some kind of thing where like he, he, you know, rushes forward and rushes back and you know snaps the neck of his opponent, or something mm-hmm. like that. It'd be pretty good. You could definitely have uh, ride the lightning, where maybe you know he takes the, uh, the you know, Gibson Explorer, hoists it to the heavens, a la Thor. And uh, uh, sends you know ten billion volts down to the opponent, and then he could always and uh, wristbands also like uh, he could have like deflecting wristbands, kind of like Wonder Woman, you know, because like he's always got those you know kind of lives in wristbands. I'm thinking, but also something else because instead of like 
I didn't want all the superpowers to be like just pure attack, attack, attack. James had that thing, as I'm sure you know, with on what on tour when he he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and he stepped in that that pyro yeah. uh, shot right and, and he ended up getting burned. So I figured like James's healing abilities would probably be a little bit higher than than the average character that we're talking about here just because i mean like he was what the next day he was he was back on stage doing a show and like that mm-hmm. that's some balls right there it's pretty cool so i thought like as far as healing uh you know getting past and recovering from the opponent's attack uh, attacks that james would be probably a little bit higher than most mm. That's a good thought. Yeah, I like that. Picture like, did, did you ever? I don't know. I don't know how old you are. Did you ever? Did you ever play with Transformers? Yep. When you were when you were a kid. Yeah. I was gonna say you and I are pretty close in age. I'm uh, 44. How, you're what? Okay, I'm I'm 46. So okay. Yeah. yeah, we're pretty close. We're very close. Almost like if you if you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of some of this, if you remember on the back of Transformers, and it was one of my favorite parts where they had that that little bar graph where for each robot. You had, what, it, well, I can't remember what they all, they were like strength, intelligence, dexterity, uh, cunning, I, I, I can't remember what all this, but you know, it had each of these levels, and so each, ro- each robot could get like a real distinct profile as to what their strengths and, and weaknesses were. And you could almost come up with something, you know, something like that for, for this system as well. Where like you know James healing you know wouldn't yes. be as yeah. uh, uh, or James would be fast uh, maybe I don't know strength might not be quite as brutal but like you know healing ability would be high you could easily come up with something like that if we wanted to take this geek them to you know new <laughs> and higher levels yet you know what's funny is I didn't because uh, we I, we kind of had twelve and then we kind of split them up and we each took six so I didn't really know who I was going to get and the, I didn't really think of many moves for anybody but there was one that I thought of for Hatfield because I thought maybe I was going to get Hatfield and I I envisioned him uh, doing the actually Whiplash I did think of Whiplash but then I thought of him doing the yeah 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 and almost like how like you know how Black Canary ha- or, uh, has that power like in DC Comics to like knock people over with their voice with her voice I'm picturing like yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hatfield does the yeah yeah you know <laughs> no I, I definitely and yeah I, I was gonna get to that too with the like for each character obviously like they'll have they have uh, you know like just those like those three or four little sound bites like all the, the Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. players mm-hmm. did you know yep. Shuriken or Yoga Fire or, or whatever it was yeah, I, <laughs> James is with different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know something. <laughs> some, get Jim Brewer to to do the voice, and yeah, so like when he throws a punch, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, oh, and, and just real quick, I I forgot one thing about James. Uh, as far as like like a conjuring power, obviously he could conjure Lars, which may be like that one cartoon that we discussed last time, where where you know he, Lars could like kind of pop out of his shoulder, and just go you know. I totally saw this fight going another way, bro, and you know, and and punching the opponent in the face or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that that you did that. You did that kind of with Paul Stanley. That was a good idea. Uh, there's, I want to say, so if some video game geeks listen to this, they'll they'll, they'll know about this. But um, I want to say it's Marvel versus Capcom that allows you to call in side guys to kind of help you fight and all that kind of stuff. So so that's yeah, it's a right along sure. the lines of those kind of games, definitely. Well, next up, I got a guy that you played with. Come on in. Blackie Lawless, all right, and uh, oh man, and and his are, are once again we're kind of easy because he has you know some of these uh, superhero characteristic uh, shock rock things or whatever. So uh, obviously he's got to have the saw blade torture, I call it. So basically he's going to be launching saw blades off of his armbands. You know he can just whip endless saw blades at you. Um, I'm figuring he's got to throw a uh, big lug of bloody raw meat at you right and that's another one from the <laughs> yep. from the early days of wasp and then he's got to have a mega move because like i said i was very dead set on trying to come up with a mega move for every all for every one of my guys and he's got to shoot it from the hip man he's got to hit you with the the uh the spark spewing cod piece has to put you put you away there with that one yes <laughs> i was although i did i did not pick blackie just for that reason that felt weird about picking superpowers for you know someone i actually know but <laughs> i did <think laughs> yeah the, the raw meat and the the uh shooting cod piece uh were, were definitely on my menu too if i had gone with blackie all right man who you got next okay who is uh who is next oh uh bruce dickinson 
Oh, okay. I got to hear this one. Um, one of my favorites of all time, obviously. Um, the conjuring, you know, like I already said, yeah, the conjuring part, the conjuring character power is pretty obvious. Where Eddie uh, could maybe have a, a variety of forms. Um, with you know, my favorite, uh, one of my favorites being the somewhere in time where you know, futuristic Eddie comes out and shoots you with the ray gun. That mm-hmm. could that yep. could work as well. Yep. Um, you have a number of Eddies that would work. He is, and, and another kind of troubled with his, uh, or struggled with his, his weapons and his powers a little bit, but I thought as a, a weapon, some kind of weapon, he could have an air raid siren, as that was his, his nickname for a little bit, like mm-hmm. right about the time, or at least I read, right about the time I was kind of discovering Maiden. Um, he could have another power, kind of like a motion, I call it scream for me. Scream for me like me. If you know that move where Bruce goes to the front of the stage, kind of squats down and, you know, holds, tells the audience to be quiet and then you know, raises his hand up to, to cheer where the opponent could get hit then with a, uh, you know, high volume uh, blast of, of audience wind. Okay, yeah. Uh, and, and it could knock them over. And as far as a weapon, I was, uh, I, I didn't want to go like just the, the sword. Uh, something so I thought like he could have he's always waving that flag around you could take like the trooper flag mic stand and that could you know have like a very sharp end and he could you know plunge that into the heart of his opponent yeah that's a good one yeah I could patch I, yeah I, I know when I think of Bruce I always think of him waving flags so yeah, that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> all right so I got another guy that you played with as well it's D Snyder and um, that's right. I got a couple for him. So this was a, this was a little tougher. I know he's he's got that kind of a look of a of, of a character type of a look, uh, especially back in the the eighties. But you know, I struggled a little bit. But then I thought of okay, well, he's going to take you under the blade, right? He, I figure he can get some kind of a giant axe blade and kind of drop from the top of the screen and just just hit you with that. So so you would be under the blade, <laughs> right? Uh, then yeah. I'm thinking like you know, hey, one of his iconic moves man from we're not going to take it is when the 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 kid transforms into d and he does that spin and i could kind of picture that in my head where d can just do some massive spin around uh, across the screen and whip you with his hair or something like that he's got a lot of hair <laughs> so that, <laughs> totally that's where i was going with that one and then i was like well geez you know i really like the song uh wake up the sleeping giant so why don't i just make d turn sure. into like a giant so i figured at some point if you, you piss him off you wake up the sleeping giant he becomes huge and he just stomps on you and you're done so ooh, that's good okay i i came up with one for d but i like yours better the only other thing like as far as like who would d like conjure what would it be and i thought yes you, the the character could be like the the stay hungry cover with you know all, all the pink and black and the makeup and then the the possible conjure power could be bent brother when you know the band went out and played in like just you know denim yeah when they went out and played you know without the makeup in just blue jeans and so you know makeup free d could maybe come across the shoulder but actually <laughs> knowing uh, uh love is for suckers and you know, that that was one of my favorites i like the i like the sleeping giant idea uh, better. I thought yeah, for him is like you could easily you could you could have the bone. Yes, from, I missed the bone. The yeah, I stay hungry. yeah. I should or, the bone. or like maybe you could do like a Captain America thing, and he could have the manhole cover from come out and play, Ooh. and uh, could use that. You know, just like just like cap and and you know throw it on, deflect it off your face, and and uh, use it that way. Yeah, man. Actually, you know what? I like both of those better than the ones I've got. I, I actually like the the bone. I hit, club you with the bone and then use the the manhole cover as the uh, shield. Yeah, yeah. I like those, man. I like those better. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, it's like the more I got into this, like, who? Oh yeah. Oh manhole cover. Oh yeah. Write that down. Okay, good. <laughs> Part with ideas like. I I got to the point like like the the more this went on like the more I was starting to you know my, em, embrace my inner geekdom and, and just go oh man like this this would be really awesome if it if it came out it would so, so uh, let's see so who uh, I'm up next oh uh, Rob Halford yeah Rob was let's next one. on my roster definitely could you know go uh, as far as like the looks you know something maybe like like right about painkiller mm-hmm. era yep. uh you know just head to toe head to toe leather with all the the you know black jacket and the studs obviously one of his powers would have to be you know super powered vocal wave 
yeah. of energy. Where, you know, and and now you could you know sample like the very beginning, the first note of "Ram It Down" or something like that, and just, ah! where he you know screams and mm-hmm. and blows you back with or you know or rings your ears with high decibel vocal cords. Uh, no, and, and the weapons for him, I thought, were pretty easy. Obviously, he could uh, uh, British steel, where he could throw gigantic uh, razor blades <laughs> at you uh, from the cover, uh, fashioned straight from the heart of Birmingham, England, and uh, direct to this game. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, another another power, obviously, the, uh, the electric eye. Oh, yeah. uh, where he can maybe do like what, what Paul Stanley was doing either, where he just you know shoots shoots something out of out of the eye, it would be yep. good. Yep. And um, and for like, like something to conjure or something like that could be uh, the the painkiller character yes, yeah. uh, coming out uh, on you know that like kind of faux motorcycle and and running over the opponent with the uh, saw blade tires. Yeah, that but that was Rob that would be formidable as well. That was the one I didn't think of any moves, and, and what you came up with was a killer. Uh, but I that's the only thing I could think of was because obviously you know we were probably getting all the same albums around the same time, and 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 that painkiller cover was just that was so cool. So yeah, if he could turn into that guy, that'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so sure. now I know my last two. I'm getting down to some real heavy hitters. These are guys that can probably sell the game because they're you know they're so iconic in the world of metal. Uh, but we'll go with uh, Ronnie James Dio, and I just uh, went with his classic stuff, man. I figured he's got to give he's got to do the rainbow horn. I figured he does the metal horns and he shoots rainbow lasers out of them. Let the rainbow in the dark. So it's got to be done. The rainbow in the dark, you know. <laughs> Uh-huh. And then I figured a uh, holy sword, uh, basically taking the giant sword that's almost bigger than him, that's in the uh, holy diver video, and he just he either chops you up or he throws it at you. So he's got to have the giant sword. Uh, <laughs> and then he's got a his mega move. He's got to conjure a dragon, man. He's got to ride a dragon and just blow you away. <laughs> he's always absolutely. I can picture that friggin' dragon on uh, the what the Sacred Heart uh, tour there. So and actually. And- Dio is actually the reason I, I could not, in good faith, give a sword to Bruce Dickinson. I'm like, no, that's nope. there's, there's one guy on this list that's going to have a sword, <laughs> and it's going to be Dio that's for right. sure. Now, can you imagine if I didn't do the yeah. sword? I feel like a big loser right now. So at least I, I picked up on that. He had to have the sword. Yeah, that was. If anything else, that was that was that was a given for sure. <laughs> so we got one one left per guy. Okay, so yep, last one. one uh, I was happy to have Alice Cooper. <laughs> Yeah. The living legend himself, um, but also not not completely easy. I, I, I and I'll get your opinion. I, I struggled with a couple of uh, powers and stuff for him. Um, he's got a couple of weapons that that would certainly work. That would certainly qualify. One would just be the constrictor, you know, where he just you know shoots a you know gigantic snake yep. to yep. you know squeeze you to death. Yep, could definitely do that. Um, I thought of the uh, a, a really evil golf club that he could he could hit you with. That's not quite as metal, but that'd be pretty awesome if, if he just yells four and and you know takes the opponent's head off uh, momentarily. Um, and maybe like uh, possibly like like a guillotine too, if you could yep. have like you know super guillotine powers. Uh, that might be a little, <laughs> a little bit more metal than the golf club. But yeah. had to say, well, maybe they could put the golf club. He's, he's a fan. Um, and then also uh, another power, just based on the on the song because it would work so well, is that uh, he could have the I'm 18 power, and he like Hetfield uh, would be able to have kind of regenerative healing mm-hmm. uh, faster than other opponents because mm-hmm. obviously you know Alice is probably still going to be on tour 40 years from now mm-hmm. and it's going to you know beat us all into the ground. Maybe not Keith Richards, but. Uh, that he would probably <laughs> heal, or or you know would be t- he'd, he'd have a uh, you know, he'd be able to last longer uh, on the battlefield, and then uh, only and, and I wasn't sure where to go, so I go okay. Well, what if he could conjure something? He could either conjure up Frankenstein, you know Frankenstein's monster, yeah. like he did in the old stage show, or and this was I I didn't like this idea quite as much, but I said you could have uh, he could conjure the billion dollar babies, and you could have just like little. Uh, you know, tiny little omen-looking infants come out and and smother the opponent and and you know bite it, their jugular vein or something yeah. like that. No, those are good. 
but you could definitely get into the the creepy factor with Alice for sure. Yeah, no, the the only two that I thought of were ones you nailed. I figured he's gotta he's gotta call the constrictor the snake, and he's got to uh, he's got to chop your head off with the guillotine. Those those are uh, the two that I would have thought of. But you know, while we're talking, okay. and you kind of gave me the idea of calling out a, a partner, man, too bad he couldn't he ca- uh, couldn't call out Kane Roberts with his machine gun guitar, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. Okay, so this is the guy. <laughs> this is the be all end all of metal is Ozzy. I mean, you got to have Ozzy in a, in a heavy metal video game if, if there's ever going to be one. Yeah. So I figured uh, one of his moves, I, I'm going to call it bat bites. So he's going to lift up his arms. You know, maybe he's going to have some kind of wings on his costume, and just bats are going to fly out and they're going to come and, and bite you. I wanted to implement Crazy Train. <laughs> And then all of a sudden he laughs, and then the train comes out. But I'm also I'm, I'm not thinking of it as like a real train. I'm thinking of it more as like a spirit. It's like a uh, it's like a ghost train. You know what I mean? And he conjures up this like like black fog train type thing that just rolls you over. Oh yeah. And then of course this was easy. This was very you know this was a no brainer. But he's got to transform into the Wolf Man and come and bite you and scratch you and all that kind of stuff from Bark at the Moon. So yeah. I thought, like, when Ozzy throws a fist, he could easily go, shut up! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, man, hey, those were killer. We, we came up with some great ones. Um, but, you know, these guys got to have a place to fight. So, you got a couple battle arena ideas? Oh, I've got that list, too. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's see what you Yep. I started, I, I started thinking of it. Cause as you, you might be, too, like, I'm picturing this, like, not really... Not really high fire, you know, like that teal, but more of like was like like a sixteen bit yeah. game yeah. where you know the the backgrounds are all different, uh, but you know and and defined, but you know just, you know certain things um, that you just notice in the back, kind of like uh, the the bathhouse or the where some of the other ones in, in uh, Street Fighter or like on on the shores of a river in Brazil yep. or yep. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I, I picture something like you know, just like that. And there are a couple of, of venues here, but I didn't want them all to be you know concert stages because that might uh, that might be a little bit um, repetitive. Yep. So, but I had a few. Um, like you could have uh, like the Sunset Strip would be yeah. a really good uh, uh, venue that you could have. You know, obviously you could see like the signs for the whiskey and the Rainbow and the Roxy. Uh, in in the background, and you know, people with big hair walking by. But that that would be a good one. Um, Tower Records, I thought of just because you know, like you you brought up the idea of like using things in the background that would be able to be you know used against the opponent. I figured you know they could shoot vinyl records at each other or something like <laughs> that'd that. That'd be good, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Vakin Open Air would be like the Ooh. biggest. Uh, concert stages that's like you know one of the more the more metal festivals so yes. that could be the concert stage with the the gigantic audience in the background Birmingham England a la Ozzy and Rob Halford for sure where uh, you, you it could take place in a steel factory mm. um, mm-hmm. I think uh, 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 sure there are a couple of uh, video games that already had that but they, you know they could definitely do it uh, and it would be apropos Ma- uh, Madison Square Garden for maybe like another venue just being legendary, but not quite as big as uh, as Vakken, but just for you know it's more indoor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, just for it being metal, you could have the, a Norwegian forest uh, yeah. where you know you'd be in the snow with the the gigantic trees, and uh, maybe you'd be able. Uh, or you might also have to fend off uh, zombies in black metal makeup at the same time, or maybe you know get hit to hit your opponent with a, a zombie arm or something like that. Let's see, and then oh yeah, and then hell, the gates of hell. Right? Yeah, so, I mean it's not hell. So. <laughs> and you could have you know Satan on a big throne, uh, you know like you're watching you know little demons like dancing around you, but it would certainly you know big red, red and orange colors, and uh, that would probably be a nice fit as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and you know where I got the idea from the interactive backgrounds is my kids uh, had bought the Injustice games, and basically they're they are um, Mortal Kombat, but with the DC heroes. And that's one of the things they've always implemented is that you know you could grab things in your surroundings, and you know water can spray at people to the the level that that it knocks sure. them over, and uh, and you could you know you can smash tresses down on people. So there's all kinds of crazy stuff that happens in those Injustice games. So I'm thinking. Uh, 
I, I didn't do a ton. I just came up with a couple. But one, and I tried to go along with some of the characters, obviously, that are in the game. So I figured Hangar 18 would be a cool place to fight. <laughs> You know, because you figure you got all these aliens and the canisters. It would look cool. And then maybe if you get too close to one of the canisters, one of them busts out and zaps you or punches you or something like that. Um, I, oh, sure. I, I figured, man, we got Gene Simmons. Got to have the Alive 2 stage, at least. If we're going to do one person stage, one band stage, you got to have the Alive 2 stage with the flash pots going off and the risers. A lot of distractions and imbalance, you know, in your fighting with all that uh, stuff going off in the background. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. And then I pictured, yeah. uh, I don't. With Bark at the Moon, I, I really all you ever see is the moon. <laughs> so, but I'm I'm picturing like a Bark at the Moon type of a stage for Ozzy, where maybe it's like a haunted cemetery, so the moon's up in the sky, and then they're like the same thing that you were said before, like zombies are coming out of the ground, grabbing your feet, keep you locked in in certain spots, um, <laughs> you know. And then and then I had thought of some basic ones too, but um, like obviously for like Dio, a castle would be very fitting, and. Uh, Sure. Where you came up with the record store, I was thinking of a guitar shop. So if you were in the guitar shop, you could pick, you know, rip a guitar off the wall and chuck it at somebody or something like that. So that's pretty, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all, all I've got. So okay. you were thinking yeah, more of like specific venues for like specific characters, like like the Ozzy one. Yeah, a little or, bit. or like the Kiss stage. Yeah, certain ones. I mean, I I know you probably couldn't do one for every single guy, but the, you know, a few of them had some pretty cool, distinct album covers that would you know make nice background uh, for the fighting. Absolutely, yeah. We have like a like kind of like a home dojo advantage or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So here's the here's the big question, yeah. Mike. If you had to name this game, what would you call it? <laughs> wow, that's the one thing I didn't actually think about. Um, I mean. I'd have to, like, the first thing is something cheesy, like, you know, like, Metal Meltdown or something like yeah, that, but that's, yeah. I'm sure that's been used for a, a, a billion, you know, shows before. Uh, I don't, did, did you have one? Did you come up with a name? Yeah, I just came up with Metal Combat, kind of like Mortal Combat, Metal Combat, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what it is. Perfect. <laughs> Although, we, I must also, and, and Tim Buck says you probably thought of, uh, of this too, obviously, as you advance through the game, and you get to a certain point, or maybe if you do it, you know, like the initial game would be free, but uh, you would have in-app purchases like oh, yeah. so many games do now, where you could unlock the bonus character pack, yep. which might include uh, Tony Iommi, King Diamond, Scott Ian, Glenn Danzig, Devin Townsend, <laughs> Sebastian Bach, Lita Ford, Kerry King, and Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah, and hey, I'll, I'll, I'll add on, I'll piggyback on that. I mean... Tell me, so hey, you know, if Gene Simmons is on here with his Love Gun costume, wouldn't it be great to buy his Dynasty costume and buy his Alive costume? And buy, you know, what I mean, you could destroy her. You know, you could buy every single costume. Oh, definitely for oh, Gene God, yeah. and for all of them. You know, yeah. you, you look at uh, a lot of these guys; they've had a lot of different looks. I mean, especially somebody like Ozzy. You know, the normal look of him today is with his little John Lennon glasses and, and, and you know cross or something like that. But when you think of uh, you know the, the way he looked in Sabbath, and, and even hey, even if you wanted the ultimate sin look, you could go for you know whoever. So whatever look you wanted. Oh, definitely, yeah. A million different fighting venues. Uh, you know what background music while you fight. I mean, you, I mean, there, there's money to be sure. made if this thing, you know, if this thing ever got off the ground. Yeah. Oh God, yeah, love it. And then and, and the weapons, yeah, could 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 go as far as you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> Did what? you ever? Actually, I wanted to ask you this. Did yeah. you ever play? There was that heavy metal video game a few years back that was voiced by Jack Black. Brutal Legend. Brutal Legend. Yeah. Yeah. I never played it. Yeah. I've, I've watched my kids play it. I've never played it. Yeah, I did. T- I, I played that for a bit. I've never. I mean, I don't think I've ever like finished a video game in my life. But um, <laughs> that that one was a lot of fun because yeah, it did have the uh, bonus uh, cameo appearances from uh, who you had Lemmy. I think Lemmy Ozzy and I think Lita Ford also was uh, was on there as well. Nice, nice. So. That was fun too, though. What kind of uh, what were some of the games that you were into when you were growing up? Because obviously we both grew up in the '80s, and you know, video games really evolved from the early to the late '80s. Well, what kind of games were you into? And what sure. game systems? I I got in there like kind of early on because uh, like the first things that I was obsessed with were were just text video games. Okay. You know, uh, there was there was that one series called Zork, uh, and they had Zork one, two, and three, and all and you know all it was was just words. I was you are standing next to a house. There is a man here. There's a mailbox. <laughs> Open mailbox. There is a note. Grab note. It says, you know, go west. Okay, go west. There is a man here. He has a sandwich. Like, that kind of a thing. And, like, even completely without graphics, I was not any less obsessed with 
a game like that, mm-hmm. you know, because like the adventure and of course the imagination factor, you know, uh, start to sound like, you know, the, the, uh, the grandfather talking about old tiny radio and that's what we <laughs> had and we liked it. But it was, it was great. And, you know, and, and because of that, and because I think I kind of started off that way, I, the direction I took with, with any game was usually in the wizard, castle, mm-hmm. treasure, dragon, sword, spell, monster, level up kind of, um, kind of format. Okay. Uh, King's, King's Quest and stuff like that. And, and was mostly, uh, computer, uh, stuff. I didn't really, I didn't have a console until, I think like until I got my sister's old one when I moved to LA and that was in like 2000. So I, I wow. never really did like the, uh, Sega Genesis or, or, uh, PlayStation 1 or, or anything like that. At least not, not in their prime. Oh, no kidding. Well, yeah, because I would say, I, I mean, I think I had I had an Atari, but it was like, you know, it just wasn't, I was probably just wasn't there yet with games. But I think once I, I bought the Sega Master System and I played games like uh, Shinobi and, and Double Dragon, a lot of beat-em-up games. And then the, when Sega Genesis came out, it just blew up. That's when I got into, like, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. And we used to have tournaments and stuff at, at friends' houses. And, yeah, I, I, I was loving that shit. <laughs> Oh, oh God, yeah. And I, I recently watched, and um, if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend it to anybody, but it's that, uh, it's that series on Netflix that's basically, I think it's like five or six parts or something like that that's like just about the history of video games, mm-hmm. kind of uh, from the beginning. It's not called Game Over, but someone I'm sure will be able to tell me what it was. I even emailed you about it, but I can't remember what it's called now. But that was it just, you know, talking about like the advances that were made little by little and the competition, like in between... Uh, like the PlayStation, or, or was it uh, uh, the Sega Genesis, mm-hmm. and um, well, like whatever the the uh, system that Mario uh, was on, it's like there, you know, there's <laughs> some pretty brutal rivalries going on, and you know, cutthroat competition to try and get you know the next big thing, the next big gaming system. Definitely. So, man, what have you been up to with drums? You been working on any special projects or anything? I've been uh, knee deep in, in a couple of things, mostly recording for just people I know. Uh, nothing. Uh, you know, nothing secret or, 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 uh, you know, big necessarily in the works. I've still been doing a ton of teaching. I've got about a dozen students that I see every week that I got to, uh, just see online. Now, with, you know, the COVID lockdown still being in place, I get to just, you know, go to my own practice space with my computer and, uh, and do, uh, drum lessons online. Um, I can be, you know, like my website's still up or it needs to be updated. I'm on uh, Meat Hook as well, if anyone mm. has heard of that app. That's uh, M-E-E-T Hook, uh, where you can find uh, any number of your favorite artists. And like even like uh, if you wanted to have a conversation with your, your favorite drummer or guitar player or whoever, and you only wanted to do like 10 or 15 minutes, uh, you can do that. You can literally like talk to, talk to someone who is on Meat Hook like for literally a matter of minutes for you know, a few dollars a minute or whatever they, they decide to charge. I had a, a really fun conversation uh, about two weeks ago with uh, just a, a young fan from, uh, he was from Sweden, and he had seen Wasp a number of times and, and just wanted to talk about the show. I'm like, damn, man, thanks, I appreciate that. That's awesome. But, and you know, so we got to talk drums and talk music, and it was a lot of fun. Just that, and, um, you know, uh, uh, as much studio stuff as I can uh, rustle up, which I'm always up for. And I think since I, I had not talked to you last time, but since I spoke to you, we did get some good news in that uh, my son's cancer was declared in remission by the doctors at uh, CHLA, that we had not yet gotten to that point. But uh, I remember uh, you had asked about that. And yes. so, yes, as far as we know, until further notice, he's free and clear. So that's been like the best news that I've had so far this year. That is awesome, man. So happy to hear that. That is great. And Where's my the... daughter was born. And I was, oh, yeah, you had a baby. Had baby about two months ago. Uh, so, so, so the we, family's uh, we good? We have our hands full right now, yeah. as it were. So, all the, so the family's doing great right now? Yes. Family, family is doing good. I'm a lucky man when it comes to family, for sure. Awesome. So when you talk about drums, is there, um, is there a way that somebody can hire you to play on their, their project? Absolutely. I can easily be contacted through my website. That's MikeDuffke.com. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've been uh, kind of lucky. It's, it's actually been uh, picking up a bit, and I've gotten to do some projects for uh, a bunch of people. Now that I've, I kind of like upped my 
uh, home recording setup, I kind of had, from, <laughs> which is to say, from nothing to, uh, you know, being able to do it myself with an interface and, you know, uh, the microphones, and to be able to send people, uh, you know, like they send me backing tracks or click tracks or the structure of a song, and I can send them my drum track and trade the files back and forth, and they'll go, nope, that's not what we're thinking, I'll try this, and I'll, you know, do it again, send it back, and... Uh, it's still, I was worried about it, like, you know, not having that personal level, you know, the personal kind of touch and feel that you get when you're working in person with someone. But actually, it's, it's been a ton of fun just to go back and collaborate still with other people while the lockdown still going on. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, hey, I really appreciate you joining me on this one. Um, I think it was a blast. It was cool to hear what ideas you came up with. I had fun doing it. I hope you did, too. I do. <laughs> I, I had a little too much fun coming up with ideas about this. <laughs> like this is, I mean, when when it comes when you talk about like you know metal geek and metal nerdiness, it's like I I fully admit and I paint myself like right up there with the best of them. I don't know if I'm like Eddie Trunk level with like the <laughs> trivia with knowing you know who played every note of every record or something right. like that. But it is you know the the little details that I really enjoy and especially getting to come up and and get creative with something like this like oh yeah how would rob halford fight people it's like oh dude <laughs> yeah there's been a whole lot of fun coming up with this list man so, yeah, so man, thank well, you for for bringing me in because oh, this, this, this was a kick no problem you did awesome i know i picked the right person to to do this with so hey man i really appreciate <laughs> <laughs> i really appreciate it dude absolutely man thanks thanks for having me i appreciate it it's been a lot of fun all right mike take care man i'm sure we'll be talking soon now it's time to finish him i hope you enjoyed it I don't know about you, but I say that Metal Combat is a flawless victory. Rock on!